Today, I'll be joined by my talented brother, Justin Simeon. You may know him from his breakout film, Dear White People, which turned into an amazing television show, his film, Bad Hair. But today, we're here to talk about his new Disney film, Haunted Mansion. How you doing? I'm good, man. Good to see you. Hey, good seeing you, too. I've been a fan for a long time and um, really, really excited about having this conversation. So first, I, I want to say congratulations on the film. And I, I read that the title um, is personal to you because you, you you worked at Disneyland when you were a kid. Yeah, it, it, it's personal to me for a lot of reasons, to be honest with you. Um, I think the central story are kind of revolving around a grizzled, like <laughs> kind of snarky, shady dude learning to kind of befriend and befather uh, a young weirdo kid. That honestly is what made it so personal to me. Uh, but then the extra layer was, yeah, I used to work at Disneyland. And when I was a kid, um, my mom took me to Disney World. And then I got into this uh, this choir. And one of the best things about being a part of the Longfellow Elementary Show Choir, thank you very much, <laughs> uh, was that we would get to go to Disney World um, and sing there. And, uh, and so I kind of grew up a little a lot of obsessed with Disney and, and, and this ride in particular. So Disney, Disney world is beautiful. Um, but I, I went there for the first time last year. Um, it's a beautiful park. It's, 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 uh, it feels something healing about seeing so many happy people, but I had a terrible time. <laughs> why yeah, nothing why? against Di nothing against disney i just think amusement parks are horrible ideas um my, oh, daughter, my daughter my daughter was two we walked 750 miles i brought i bought 20 dollars sodas and i stood in line for months at a time but but you know what's crazy is like it's, it's for children but it's like the last place children should be <laughs> <laughs> it's just like Anyway, I feel you though. I really <laughs> no, but it's this it's, it, it it looks amazing. Um, um, how long did you have this up your sleeve, or, or better yet, can you can you talk about how this whole project came together? Yeah, I mean, I was uh um uh working kind of in the halls of Disney uh on a different project that I won't be working on anymore, as was announced. Uh, and I uh got this script, and I thought the script was great, and I thought Katie uh, Dipple, the writer of the script, um was just really funny and smart and, and found this kind of way into the mansion that I thought was like, oh, wow, this is really cool for people who are not fans, but it also plays a lot of fan service for the people that are really hardcore fans. And I just felt like I knew how to direct it. I felt like it was an ensemble comedy, like my first film. It had a lot of horror, like flourishes, like my second film. Um, but also, but unlike my first two films, it wasn't necessarily like message forward, you know? Uh, the message of the story was much more um, embedded and it felt escapist and it felt like, I don't know, it felt like fun. It felt like something that was really different from the stuff I was working on at the time. And uh, and I and I pitched for it, you know, and I pitched a, a vision of practical effects and wanting to really bring in the culture of New Orleans and bring in black culture and uh, cast a black lead. And, you know, I just kind of pitched as if, hey, you can go with my version or not. And they they kept going with my version. And, uh, you know, maybe like uh, a few months later, I was in Atlanta uh, pre prepping for this movie like 2021. And uh, and we just finished it. <laughs> so, oh, wow, <laughs> it's been a journey. You know, it's the funny thing is, I, I got I got to witness it in the theater with other people last night. Oh, nice. Um, when it when it ended, people didn't get up. People didn't want to leave. Wow, Think something cool. about those dancing ghosts at the end that just had everyone <laughs> <laughs> kind of stuck. There's there's no shortage of talent in the film. You have everybody from Lakeith to Rosario to Tiffany to Danny DeVito to Jamie Lee Curtis to Owen Wilson, and and the list goes on. What what was that experience like for you working with so many veterans? It was amazing. I mean, it was it was a little intimidating at first because especially with big movie stars, you know, sometimes that the personality can eclipse the the craft. Uh, but that was not the case with these people. I mean, these people really all the way around Jared Leto, Jamie Lee Curtis, Danny DeVito, Rosario Dawson, Lakeith Stanfield. We already know Chase Dillon, um, Tiffany Haddish. Oh, my God. Like everybody really came to play and they came to work and they came to do their craft and they came to 
support an ensemble film. You know, there was no uh, there was no diva, you know, asshole attitudes in the room. It, it really was a loving uh, group of people. And um, and I felt so supported by them and I felt so honored to be able to support them in, in doing their work. What did you learn from working with all of them? Mm, 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 mm. Endurance. I think like um, it wasn't even like a logical mental learning. It was a learning in the body of just how to, you know, I, the longest thing I'd ever done is my series. Um, and a, a series of the show took several months. This by far was the longest production time period I've ever been in in my whole life. And the thought that like you can't burn out every day, you can't you literally cannot like bleed on the floor every day or you just won't make it. Uh, you have to kind of pace yourself and you have to take things as they come and, you know, just sort of like be with the process. Um, I had to learn that. I had to learn that in my body, like I said, uh, because something like this is so big, but it also moves really slow because it's so big. And, you know, some of the page counts, like I, I'm used to shooting like seven, seven pages a day or 15 pages a day if I have to, which right. is, you know, a lot of pages uh, in, in director speak. And on this one, it was like half a page or a page because we had to shoot so much more for the visual effects. So much more had to be wrangled and arranged. And in spite of all of that, trying to keep everything feeling like it was alive for the actors, you know, and, and like we weren't just sort of like props, you know, in this bigger uh, smorgasbord picture. So that that taught me some some patience and some endurance. And I think, um, you know, maybe some compassion, too, for the process. Wow, would you work on something that that uh, that has this type of shooting schedule again? Yeah, it would depend, though. I mean, I think um, one of the things that I also learned is what kind of impedes my ability to create certain kind of spaces that I think um, you know really make the best kind of work. But the thing about doing a studio movie is that, like, you kind of it's like getting shot in, out of a cannon. You know what I mean? It's it's literally a whole new world of people, uh, places. Um, the actual job of it all. That was exactly the same to me, uh, but just the the method by which you get to the job and get or and get you know get to work and get everything else off your plate uh, very different. So I would absolutely love to play in the playground like this and do a shooting schedule like this. There are other things I might I might change though. So people outside of the industry, we we see all of those special effects and um, we tend to think a lot of that stuff is is done in post, but it sounds like a lot of that grind was just happening. Um, as you were shooting the movie in general. Yeah, I was really, especially with bad hair, I'm I'm in love with practical and camera effects. Uh, bad hair, it was like, that was the vibe of that movie, but it was also kind of like, we didn't have the money to <laughs> do anything digitally. Uh, and it was just so much fun. And, and I, I have such a love for movies before the kind of digital era where, you know, they're using matte paintings and they're using puppets and they're, they're using stop motion. They're using whatever they can to like create this visual world. And, and while some of those things may not be as photorealistic as what we can do digitally, the fact that it's real and it's tactile, it leaves an impression on the actors. It leaves an impression on the audience when they're watching it. So a lot of stuff we built practically, we, we really built the house. Um, uh, almost all of the effects, uh, even the ghost swirlies have a practical or several practical elements that the digital team kind of had to build up off of. Um, yeah, that was like that. There's no going back for me in that in that regard. I really loved I really loved that process. You know, Hatbox Ghost is a really prime example. Um, he's he's part digital. He's part man. He's part Jared Leto. He's part our stunt guy, Colin. Uh, but before we even like sort of started shooting him walking around, we built his head, you know, as if we were going to do it animatronically, you know, and 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 you don't even really feel that in the movie, but we had to do that because we needed to know how light would hit, you know, his skin surface. We needed to know, uh, you know, what it would look like when his eyes moved. Like, you know, these are things that we needed to understand and put on camera uh, before we could even really do the visual uh, wizardry of it all. It's, it's, it's just a beauty also to just see um, so many Black people participating and and being a part of um a film that that could be could be considered sci-fi right um you know we you know uh, obviously Octavia Butler but but even beyond that like you know we 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 love Disney we love Star Trek we love Star exactly. Wars we love all of these different we love all of these different um 
we love all of this kind of art. And, you know, it, it, it seems like um, sometimes when we have these conversations, people are surprised. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, it, I would take it even further into the world of fantasy where you have like, mm -hmm. and, you know, you got a Harry Potter is usually a black face somewhere in there or, you know, um, something like Wednesday. I think there was like a big to do over, you know, what do black people even look like in, in some of these spaces and and do they even look like anything? Do they do they ever exist right. there? Right. And like you said, this is this is a world in which we all know intimately well. You know, we all black people, <laughs> we are the ultimate outsider. We are the ultimate sort of um, fringe character in American life. And we have to create our own spaces. And we we you know, we have to pull from our ancestry and from uh, understandings of the spiritual world that are different than what's in the main. I mean, this is literally our the fabric of our actual lives. So of course we love fantasy and of course we love sci-fi. And frankly, so much of great fantasy and sci-fi is derived from like white people's sort of understanding of black life. So um, it is, you know, these are the kinds of things that you don't really put out on the poster <laughs> or like talk about in all the press interviews. But these are the reasons why I make this movie why i make movies like this is because it actually is extremely radical to see um black people or people of color rather and white people and people who just look like americans just mm -hmm. american people right. um you know facing these supernatural situations and coming together to to get through them that is actually still a very radical uh image um for cinema and that speaks far more to you know how cinema has kind of let us all down than it does about you know the movie being bold or something it shouldn't be that radical <laughs> you know um and you know again um I, I i really really want people to get out and see this film um not to give too much away but even like you know that first uh image of jamie lee curtis's head being inside the <laughs> ball was just like it's I, I want people to go see the film, but I, I also want you want you to talk about what's going on in the industry right now. Um, I'm a mm -hmm. new screenwriter. I just started writing some things for HBO and some of those things have just came to a halt um, mm -hmm. because of the writer's strike. And, you know, we're out here hurting. But your company, Culture Machine, is is is, is working hard at taking care of um, fellow artists. Yeah, we're trying to, man. We, we got hit. You know, we got maimed like everybody by the strikes, um, which I got to say, look, it's. It's collateral damage because the strikes are happening for a reason. Before the strikes were happening, there was an energy and there was an anger that was boiling up in all artist communities and especially in black artist communities because we always get it the worst. We know this. Um, and uh, it was bound to happen is, is all I can really say. Um, and some of the issues that the that you know writers and actors are still fighting for and the directors were fighting for are really existential issues things that if we do not arrive at a resolution they will wipe us out and if if you know for no no shade but if if you know really wealthy white writers and actors are in the streets concerned about this then you better believe we should be concerned about this too because it's always it's it's always a little bit worse for us a lot of it worse for us actually um <clears throat> so yeah it's been um it's been tricky our overall deal at culture machine got suspended you know which is not even really shade to our parent company everyone's overall deals got suspended but those overall deals are how we build that it's how we sort of get office space and ceos and make connections and make things happen so that when we're focused on making a movie or making a tv show which is all consuming we can still continue to build our business and our brand and a version of hollywood that we want to work in right so that happened to us you know we launched a gofundme campaign people were very generous um, and even in spite of that generosity, it, it's it, it really is only designed to take us to the fall, which here it is. We're in the fall. Right, Strike right. is still going. Um, you know, not totally sure what all we're going to do, frankly. Uh, but I think it's important to be out there and to let people know, hey, you can have a hit show. You can have mm -hmm. a huge Disney tentpole movie and still really not make enough to, mm -hmm. you know, cover kind of like run of the mill costs to be in this industry and to build um you know to build a, a footprint in it so um that's what you know that's what i'm doing i'm <laughs> sort of uh i tend to speak the, the quiet parts loud um and and that's what we're doing right now um 
but but at the same time i'm i'm i really support the the labor movement it, it really is important that we 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 drill down these issues and um you know kind of let people know what's what's really happening here ideally what does the industry look like after these strikes end man i have no idea i i truly have no idea but i would like to see a world in which frankly i'm going to be really specific here because i think what we do i'm a big ball one night when it comes to this theory what we do for the worst of us or the people at the bottom of the status we do for all of us if if we have a hollywood where black people and trans people and women can operate uh and 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 kind of navigate it just as smoothly as every other white straight man and by the way that is not very smooth making it in hollywood for anybody is an extremely difficult and masochistic and crazy process no matter who or what you are but if we can at least get to where they're at the whole thing gets better uh i think we are already kind of seeing that in terms of what audiences are responding to in you know the television space i think movies are still catching up to that but uh yeah, I think that I think that we've really got to create a space where artists don't feel so freaking exhausted and exploited. Um, you know, I, I think artists are willing to bleed and over deliver and give everything. You know, you're a writer. So it's like when it, when push comes to shove, it doesn't matter how many payments we have left. It doesn't matter how many drafts I'm supposed to get paid. We're not doing we're obviously not doing for the money. What a crazy thing to do for money. Um, right. <laughs> so we're going to we're going to give it our all. Just give us an equitable share of the profits that we are generating, period, and give us room to fail and survive and do the things that it requires for artists to be great. That's only going to help the industry. Uh, that's only going to make the industry richer and more profitable. Absolutely. Uh, what What's next for you? I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, there's a not just like you. There's a number of things that are just on hold until the strike is done. So, you know, I got to I got to kind of shore up the situation at Culture Machine. Um, obviously, like releasing this film is is a huge weight off and, and something to celebrate. Um, but I think it's probably time to like kind of hit some picket lines you know, do some some spec writing for nobody in particular because right. we're not doing that. We're on strike. We're on strike. Um, we for ready myself. For <laughs> exactly for myself. You know, um, it's right. been a long time since I've been able to just write for myself, not on assignment. So uh, there's a lot of that's going to be going on, and um, yeah, we're just going to keep pushing, man. Where well, you know, tell everyone, you know, as we wait and we deal with this strike, tell everyone where they can take a break at and and, and watch your your. Uh, Dude, come watch on I family. promise you, you haven't seen anything like it. I'm gonna say this, and it's all I'll say about it. We have one of the highest audience scores of all the movies out this summer. Come check out what audiences are saying about the film. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, and then watch it again in Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do that do that you can that you, you'll be doing your part for black art if you just do that and i think you'll enjoy yourself too absolutely thank you so much for coming on and um congratulations again i appreciate it man thanks for talking